My name is Paul Williams. I'm Regional Manager, Hazardous Materials for Norfolk Southern Transportation. Today we're going to talk about DOT specification tank cars, some of the features, some of the distinguishing characteristics that you can look at to determine what type of tank car it is. We're going to start off with the reporting mark. This series of letters and numbers sensing on both sides and both ends of the car, it's like a license plate. There's no other tank car in North America that has this same set of letters and numbers. If you can get this one piece of information off any hazardous materials tank car, get a hold of the railroad, we can tell you exactly what's in the car, where it's going to, where it came from, who made it. We can uh, give you all the information you need as well as emergency response information responding to whatever may be coming out of this car. Below the reporting mark and number is the load limit and lightweight. Load limit is how much product you can fit in it. Lightweight is how much the car weighs when it's empty. Many DOT 111 tank cars and almost all ethanol tank cars have bottom outlets. They're loaded from the top, unloaded from the bottom. If you have a bottom outlet, the valve must be protected by a skid. That's what this large piece of metal is here. It's designed that in the event of a derailment, this nozzle can be sheared off and yet this large skid plate will protect the valve and pre prevent it from being damaged in the derailment. All tank cars containing hazardous materials have to be placarded on both sides and both ends. In this case, Flamble Liquid 1987. You can get these four digits off this placard, look it up in the DOT ERG, and find out what is in the, the tank car itself and what emergency response protocols you take in order to respond to a leak of that material. You can also use the color, the number at the bottom, and the symbol using the DOT ERG to get more information if this number is not here. This is the year the tank car was built in this black box here. In this case, it was built in July 2007. In some cases, knowing when the, the year the car was built can be very critical to uh, railroad people when they're responding to determine what kind of steel it was made from. Another piece of critical information as emergency responders you need to obtain is the DOT specification on the tank car. The DOT specification is always on the right side of the tank towards the end. And in this case, it says DOT 111A 100W1. That tells you it's a general service low pressure tank car with a working pressure of 100 PSI. Below that DOT specification is a qualification stencil. It tells you when the car was qualified and to do again. More critical though is this piece of information right here. Pressure relief, PRD, pressure relief device. It tells you it's a valve and it's set to discharge at 75 PSI. That means that the pressure in that tank car gets above 75, that valve will open up, relieve the pressure, once it gets below 75, that valve will reseat and seal off the car again. Both ends of a tank car are identical. The only distinguishing feature is the handbrake, in which case if the end that the handbrake is on is the B end. The opposite end is the A end. All tank cars containing hazardous materials must be placarded. In this case, this is an ethanol 1987 flammable. You have placards on both sides, both ends. All DOT specification tank cars have to have a shelf coupler. This is an example of a shelf coupler. It has this shelf on the top and the bottom, which allows the couplers to prevent the couplers from overriding each other in the event of a derailment. And if they override, they can come up and puncture a hole in the head of the car. On the ends of the cars, you have the reporting mark. Again, it's a series of letters and numbers. It's like a license plate on an automobile. And you have gallon capacity in liters and gallons. Gallons because in the United States, liters because these cars go into Mexico and Canada. This is the A end of the tank car. Again, you can tell because the brake is not on it. You've got on both ends of the car, you've got the reporting mark, initial number, as well as the capacity in gallons and liters. One of the things you want to know as an emergency responder when it comes to tank cars is whether the tank car is bearskinned or jacketed. One of the ways you find out whether it's jacketed or bearskinned is look for this saddle weld. If you can see this saddle and this weld where the tank sits in the saddle, if you can see this, that means this is a bare skin car. Any damage is on the tank to itself, not to the jacket. If there's flashing around here and you cannot see this weld, that means it's jacket and some of the damage you're looking at could be just jacket damage versus damage to the tank. Again, this is a bare skin tank. DOT regulations require that an emergency response telephone number be on the shipping papers. If you can't get a hold of the shipping papers, they're damaged or destroyed, and you still need emergency response information, you can call Chemtrek at 1-800-424-9300. They'll aid first responders in uh, determining how to respond to hazardous materials in tank cars. 
That's it for the bottom part of the car. Now we're going to have Scott Gould, our hazardous materials compliance officer, take you up on top of the car and show you the valves and fittings. Here we're on top of a uh, ethanol tank car. Uh, right here, this is your uh, protective housing for your valves. Uh, there would normally be a cable seal on here that would be cut. Housing gets open and underneath you find your valves. What we have here is a three inch induction line. This is your liquid line for the tank car. This runs, has a, a three inch pipe, goes to the bottom of the tank car. You can load product from there and unload product from here. This here is your vapor valve. This sits in your vapor space of the tank car. If you were a first responder and you had a, an incident and there was liquid coming from, from your uh, protective housing here, and uh, most likely in the car was loaded, your plug's pretty much loose or your valve's open. That'd be the first thing I would check. This here is a manway. These bolts tighten it down, tighten it kind of like a, a star pattern like you would a car tire. As you can see, this also has a seal on it. There is a uh, safety bolt here. So if you undo all these bolts, these have to, uh, you have to lift the manway a little bit and then these will swing down. That's designed so if the car has pressure on it, it's not gonna blow off in your face. Underneath this lid here, there's a gasket. That seals the uh, lid to the tank car. Once this is opened up, if this car is loaded, you'll see his product. If this car is empty, you'll see the residual that's on the bottom of the tank car or the bottom of the tank car. There is no baffles inside these tank cars. These are just one big open vessel. This is your only entry point uh, to the tank car for a person to go into the tank car. The importance for that is for first responder. If this car was cleaned in the, in the field and a body was in there, and person got fatigued or something happened, um, this would be your uh, point of entry for getting them out of the tank car. What we have here is a pressure relief device. This, uh, this relieves the pressure in the car. This particular one is a spring-loaded pressure relief device, so when the car builds up pressure to whatever it's rated for, it will release it and reshot itself. There is a O-ring gasket in there, so if that became damaged or uh, fatigued uh, at any point in time, it could cause a leak with a sloshing effect or if this car was to roll over on its side. DOT has recently released regulations requiring the use of a DOT 117 tank car for the transportation of flammable liquids. The DOT 117 tank car is a general service tank car, but it varies from a 111. DOT 111 tank cars can be jacketed or bare skinned, and they're generally 7 16 to a half inch thick tank. A DOT 117 tank car it is required to have a steel jacket and is required to have thermal protection under that jacket to protect the car in the event of a pool fire or a torch fire. Additionally, it is required to be a minimum of 9 16 of an inch thick. The heads of that jacket are required to be 1 half inch thick steel. Those head shields function as a deterrent for puncturing the car in the event of a derailment. Up on top of the car, all the valves and fittings on a general service tank car are inside a protective housing. That's a three quarter inch thick piece of steel ring that's designed to protect the valves in the event of a rollover. On the bottom of the car, the bottom outlet is protected with a skid. In addition to that skid plate, it has a specially designed bottom outlet that either allows the operating handle to be put up inside the skid, removed or disengaged while in transportation to prevent the opportunity of opening up the valve if you derail the car. All the safety features of the DOT 117 tank car are intended to make it a safer vessel to transport flammable liquids. In the event of a hazardous materials emergency, when you roll up on the scene, you're not alone. There's a lot of information available to you from the carrier, from getting the reporting marks on, from the cars, by determining the type of car that it is, by contacting Chemtrek, the shipper. There's a lot of resources. You do not need to rush in stand back, determine what you're dealing with, and then proceed from there. The AskRail app is a safety tool that provides first responders immediate access to accurate, timely data about what type of hazardous materials a rail car is carrying, so they can make an informed decision about how to respond to a rail emergency. AskRail is a backup resource if information from the train conductor or train consist is not available.